2D. Okay. So now I'm going to substitute this in. Noting I've got a log, this is negative by the way, and another log, I can put these together into a single log. Right? So I'm going to say t equals, I'll do the substitution first and then I'll combine my logs. This one's positive, this one's negative, so if I take out a factor of 40, what's going to be on the inside of my log? 40 over 40 Very good. So this one really should be first, and I divide through by this guy. Yep. Awesome. I have a time expression. Okay, time function. So this is really easy to draw, right? Have a yeah, think about it. Can you do so so oh yeah, of course. Okay, now, hold on. This is not that hard to rearrange, right? Because look at it. Look. This is going to be an exponential. Right? It's going to be an exponential. So if I, well, if I actually put this um, 40 over here, I'm guessing. So if you left the negative out, wouldn't that be easier? Yeah, so in fact, I'm going to put the negative in mm -hmm. because why am I putting a negative in? What I want is that V to be up on the numerator. Yeah. Right? It's kind of an awkward spot at the moment. So if I multiply both sides by negative 1, that's going to become this over here and over here, these guys flip because it's to the power of negative 1. So far, so good? Yep. I'm going to lay both sides to the power of e to the power of that, like this. What happens to the right hand side? It's just that, right? I'm going to simplify that in one here. That's 40g minus, sorry, 40g or 40g minus v or 40g. Yep, look at that. These guys are going to switch. So I'm going to get this guy over here, this guy over here, and then I'm going to divide, multiply through the last. Okay, now just pause for a moment. You've gone through all of this calculus. Does it match what you expect to happen? Um, when you draw this graph, and we're going to do these at the same time, when you go through what the picture looks like, when time is equal to zero, I already know what the velocity is. Okay? So what happens to the time, the velocity rather, as time gets bigger and bigger and bigger? What happens to this whole term over here? Yeah, it, it sort of disappears away, and all you get left with is this guy. Okay, so you're approaching a limit. We know what that's going to be, right? So that'll be our answer for part C. Let's draw this thing. It's pretty simple. So can you just have equation B on A equals four G? Yes, you could. That's another way to do it. There's this both ways to do it. We'll work for it. So I'm getting this asymptote up here, and it's going to look something like this. You happy? This is a time axis and a velocity axis. Okay. So that was part B. It wasn't very complicated. Now, when you're answering part C, there's two ways to go about this. Okay, two ways. You can think about it from a limit point of view because that's what the term velocity is, after all. Or you can think about it from a Newton's laws point of view. Okay. So we'll do them each one at a time. Um, so number one, if you were to do this by limits, and you don't need to do both of these, but I'm just showing you each one. The term of velocity is, what's the velocity terminating on as time approaches infinity, right? So I'm literally going to write the limit as t approaches infinity of velocity, right? And I have a velocity function just over there. So this is the limit as t approaches infinity of 40g, 1 minus, like so, okay? 40g is a constant, so I'm going to bring that guy out the front. The limit is still there. Actually, I'll take that back. I can evaluate the limit. This is going to be one take away. It's zero. not a denominator thing. It's just going to become zero, right? I'm like one over n to the power of n. So <coughs> one times 40g, this is my terminal velocity, and I'm just getting it from the limit definition of what terminal velocity is. But secondly, remember what we said about terminal velocity and Newton's laws? This is uniform straight line motion, which means what about the acceleration? There's no acceleration acting on the body, right? Now go back, go back. Where's acceleration written down in the cleanest, simplest form before we started mucking with it so we could get to a velocity function? Okay, it is pretty simple there, but I've got a statement in here, an equation that literally says acceleration is this. That one, right? Do you see that there? And that, that we, we wrote this, we chose that so I could get to my velocity function. So I'm just going to go back to here and say number two by um, the first law. 
if there's terminal velocity, terminal velocity means or indicates zero acceleration. So I'm going to go over to my acceleration function and I'm just going to say that g minus 1 on 40v, that better be zero because otherwise it's not terminal velocity, is it? Something's still changing its velocity. So this, as you can see, is very simple to solve. Um, I'll leave this guy over on this side, negative g, and then you multiply through to get the result we already knew. Okay? So I know this is fine. Yeah. All right, lastly, I'm just going to leave this with you to do on your own because we're running out of time. How are we going to get to this? It's very similar to what we've already done. Okay, so you've got your, fun your velocity function, and all you need to do is say, well, that's dx and dt, and this is already in terms of time. So off you go, integrate again, and you're done.